Hi, I'm Carlo Rovelli. I uh, do physics and I'm going to answer some of your questions. So welcome to Ask Carlo. At Carlo FT, so it's my same name. If Carlo Rovelli could ask only one question to a super intelligent creature from another planet or a supercomputer that knows pretty much everything about the universe and the physics of it, what would he ask? Um, this is a question that I've thought about, I've considered uh, what would I do in this situation. So I would ask the question, how are you? How you feel? How does it feel to be in another planet? And how does it feel to be to know everything? Is it give you happiness or not? And then I will keep for myself the pleasure of trying to discover um, things about the universe that he does know already. Question number two. It has been suggested that white holes, are the opposite of black holes, as black holes supposedly have a singularity at the center, could there be a possibility of interdimensional interaction? Now, careful. Uh, a white hole is, uh, first of all, and uh, essentially, a, a particular solution of the equations written by Einstein uh, back more than one century ago, uh, the equation of general relativity. Uh, and this solution describes a possible shape uh, of space-time, describes a possible phenomena, phenomenon that can happen in the universe. There is another similar solution, which is black hole, uh, the two are very similar, in fact, because uh, they are related by time inversion. So if you could imagine filming one and projecting the film backward, you would get the other one. The interior of black holes and the singularity, we know pretty well um, how it is. And the singularity is not at the center. Imagine you're in a black hole and you go uh, down to the, to, 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 to the center. You could Imagine you could move in a black hole a little bit. Uh, so, so, sometimes, often, we think that is an image of a black hole. Uh, it's like a long tube, and uh, if you go down to the center, you get here. And uh, uh, often people think that the singularity is here, but not true. The singularity is not here. The singularity is all over in the future. So if you go in and wait, whether you are here or here or here or here or here, you get squeezed by the singularity. So imagine this thing is actually shrinking and squeezing you into a singularity. So singularity is not at the center, it's in the future. Um, black hole is like a room, it's not somewhere in the room which singularity is. Wherever you are, you're going to hit or be hit by the singularity. So what happened at the singularity is the same question of what happened next after everything uh, uh, squeezed. And we are not sure of what happens, but um, that's one of open question in, in, in fundamental physics. But what I think is that there is no dimensional transmutation, not anything like that. You simply uh, jump around the other side of the singularity, you continue uh, to exist uh, into a white hole. This takes us to the third question. Can a white hole exist? Uh, if it can, where does the matter it throws out come from? And uh, uh, the answer to the question is yes. I think that uh, um, when you're inside a black hole and things uh, shrink around you, uh, what happens next is that you find yourself in a white hole. And uh, so everything which was inside the black hole finds itself in the white hole. In the black hole you could only go down, in the white hole you can only go up. So where does it come from, the matter that exits the white hole? Well, it comes from the matter that enters the black hole uh, before. The uh, current situation about white holes is that we, we know them well because we have the theory, mathematical theory that describes them well, like we knew black holes before seeing them, but we don't know if they are realized in the universe. Now, one possibility that they are realized in the universe is that uh, they come from uh, the future of, of black holes. So black holes becomes white holes later on. So how could we see them, detect them? And there are two, two directions for that. One is uh, uh, by seeing their effect, uh, their effect and uh, by uh, mm, comparing with things we see on nature and see whether what we see could be white holes. And the other is by direct detection. First possibility, uh, a 
tempting possibilities that we have already seen them, and what the astronomers call dark matter, uh, this strange uh, sort of powder halo which is around galaxies, uh, of which we see the gravitational effects, but we don't know what it is because it's not things which interact with light, so we don't see them, we see their effect. Uh, it is possible that they, the dark matter could be make, made by uh, many small um, white holes. To test whether this possibility is real, it's a complicated story because it requires uh, asking whether it's possible that black holes in the past could be formed, decayed, become white hole. So is this consistent with the history of cosmology? It's a, it's a complicated theoretical work of mm, seeing if this uh, um, uh, hypothesis about dark matter is plausible. Second possibility is by direct detection, namely uh, constructing a machine here and waiting a white hole to pass by and detecting it. And uh, there are theoretical papers uh, out there which make hypotheses about how this machine could be made. It's not impossible, it's not immediately possible with current technology, but I would say uh, 30 years ago it seemed totally impossible to see gravitational waves, to build a machine that detected gravitational waves. Uh, uh, detecting a passing by white hole should not be much more complicated than that. The expected size of them is small, Black hole, white holes exist in the universe are uh, expected to be very small. So there'll be teeny things that could fly by, they interact only gravitationally, so we cannot touch them, we cannot see them, but we can see their gravitational pool. So a machine would be sort of many little electronics that feel the gravitational pool of something that goes down. One of the hypotheses of how to build such a machine is a recent paper that I've just sent to journals a few weeks ago. So question number four, does the universe really have zeros and infinities? This is a very good question. Um, it, it's not that the universe has zeros or number three or infinities. It's that we use zero or infinity or number three, number five, number seven for describing the universe. So the right question is, uh, are there things in the universe which can number zero of them? Yeah, of course. I mean, because uh, um, I can uh, define something and then count how many these things are, the number of them can be zero. Oh man, this is an iPad. I mean, how many iPad long five meters exist? Zero, as far as I know. Infinity is much more subtle because uh, uh, we often describe the universe using uh, infinity. We say that uh, in space there are infinite number of points. Or uh, we may think maybe the universe is infinite. Uh, we can say we can go infinitely small. I think uh, that in reality nothing is really infinite. The universe is not infinite, space cannot be infinitely divided. At some point you get to the minimal chunk of space and uh, uh, presumably time itself is not, uh, is not uh, infinite. In fact, my work, uh, my main work in quantum gravity has exactly been um, uh, trying to compute on the basis of Einstein theory and quantum mechanics uh, the minimal size uh, of a chunk of space, uh, which shows, in fact, that space cannot be infinitely divided. So between my hands, the certain number of elements of space, a huge number, but not an infinite number. So I would say, yes, there are things which are zero in the universe. Zero is useful. Uh, it precisely describes the universe. Infinite is useful, but it does not precisely des describe the universe. It's just an approximation to say many. Last question. Is time itself unidirectional or it's just the way our brain uh, perceives it? That's an important question, a beautiful question, is uh, much debated uh, today uh, in physics, in neuroscience, uh, across disciplines. I think the correct answer of this question is neither. Certainly, in our perception of time, a lot depends uh, on our brain. But I don't think that is correct to say that the direction of time is something uh, that depends on our brain. Because when we study phenomena where our brain has nothing to do with it, something that happens by itself, uh, these phenomena do show a direction of time. On the other hand, it's not true um, either that uh, the direction of time is a property of time itself. Because uh, we know, it has come as a surprise, but uh, we, knows, we know from the basic laws of physics that all of them don't distinguish the past from the future. 
suppose you live in a mountain in a, uh, on a hill, say northern Italy, and then one direction if you go north you go uphill and if you go south you go downhill. And then you can say, oh, to be uphill it's an intrinsic property of north? No, because if you go the other side of the mountain you go uphill going south and downhill going north. So what is uphill and downhill in a mountain is just the, the arrangement of the mountains and where you are with respect to the mountains. So the universe in which we live uh, happened to be different in the past than in the future because it's just on a particular history that has this, uh, this property. And we capture th this difference between how the universe was arranged in the past and how the universe happened to be arranged uh, in the future with this notion of entropy, which is low in the past and high in the future, that is, uh, changes uh, in one particular direction. And that's what makes the past different from the future. So it's neither a brain by itself, nor a time by itself. It's just the, the way things are arranged, that in the past they were arranged in a certain way, in the future gets arranged in another manner, and this orients the time and the universe, the, the universe is oriented by itself in, in a way. This particular arrangement of the universe is such that, because of that, uh, the present happens to be full of traces of the past, so we remember the past, we don't remember the future. So this feeling uh, um, of passage of time, of fixity of the present, openness of the future, that is what we feel, it's in our brain. But the root of the difference uh, between the two directions of time is independent from our brain. That's all. White holes has been the, the main topic of my uh, research uh, in, in, in physics and quantum gravity the last years, and uh, uh, the, this is the little uh, book that I've written uh, telling about the research, so I want to know more about white holes is here. But the book is not only about white holes, it's also about what it is to do theoretical research, what it is to be sort of the margin of what we know and try to guess um, beyond it, try to imagine uh, uh, how the pieces of our knowledge could match together to tell us something more uh, beyond uh, uh, what we know. So this is a book in which, I, it's a very personal book, in which um, it's personal, not, not, only, not just because I talk about my own research, but also because I talk a lot about um, the feeling, the emotions, the fears, the worry, uh, the ways we think uh, in doing uh, theoretical research. Thank you for all your questions. Bye-bye.